This is green fluorescent protein. You can probably imagine why I'm showing it to you. It has a helix in the middle surrounded by a beta barrel. This protein is interesting because it is a natural compound that gives rise to fluorescence, meaning that if you radiate it with one type of light, it tends to, sh well, it emits blue, uh, green light. That's why it's called green fluorescent protein, if you didn't catch it. Not only that, by changing certain groups, amino acids here and everything, we can make this fluoresce in a bunch of different colors, uh, essentially by changing small groups. Apart from the fact that it's fun to play with color, this has been a remarkable discovery in science. This is used in a ton of biochemistry experiments and everything just to detect whether things are, for say, on the inside or the outside of a cell. Cheap and efficient, and we don't have to introduce any artificial compounds. And you can do even cooler things with it. This is a jellyfish um, that occurs in nature that expresses green fluorescent protein. And again, you're seeing the biofluorescence here. Roger Chen came up with the idea that maybe we can take those proteins and start injecting them in the body or so and use that for artificial applications. And Roger, who sadly died much too young a few years ago, his lab started expressing all these different varieties in different colors. Uh, and again, this small petri dish, it's entirely full of green fluorescent protein in different strains. What they then were able to do is that they were able to take this to the clinic, in particular the surgical labs, and that you can use this to in inject and really color different types of tissue. Because if we now combine these proteins with a receptor or something that would make, say, the red one bind to one type of tissue, while the green one binds to a second type of tissue and the yellow one to a third type of tissue, we can do this. Imagine you're a surgeon and you're going to cut out a cancer tumor. Here is the cell. Please cut out the tumor. That's not entirely easy, right? And literally, this is how surgeons see it. With a lot of skills, you might be able to see the tumor parts here. I certainly can't. Armed with green fluorescent protein developed in Roger's lab, you see this instead. Cut the green parts. A five-year-old could do this, right? This is remarkably cool. There is only one problem here. Uh, among all this stuff, you might have some nerve cells. And you sure, you definitely want to cut out the entire tumor. But you would, at least as far as possible, you would uh, like to avoid inflicting nerve damage, right? So let's bring out a second copy of green fluorescent protein that binds specifically to the nerve cells. So here you see, well, up on the upper right, you see the uh, white light pattern. And I think in B here, you're seeing how we call it the nerve cells. And then eventually uh, you can, well, C in particular might be the yellow fluorescent protein. Uh, that's bound to the uh, axons. But basically, as a surgeon, you're going to get a coloring book here. So cut green, but not yellow or blue. It's certainly not perfect, and you might still make a mistake, but it's completely amazing that you can color tissue